Well, hello everybody. Here we are in Austin, Texas at the IBM Austin campus, which is always nice to visit. And we have a, uh, a, a, a I don't know, two or three time returning guest here to go over some uh, new exciting stuff in Tivoli land. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Michael. I'm Phil Fritz. I'm a product manager at Tivoli, and my uh, area is uh, our Tivoli Live software as a service portfolio. In, in the Tivoli Live portfolio, about I guess it was actually just about a year ago that we filmed the uh, the little overview that we did about the Tivoli Live, uh, the first release that, that you came out. And basically it had some monitoring and reporting and, and, and things along those areas. And and you guys are, are coming, you've come out with a new, um, it's always interesting picking in a SaaS how you phrase this stuff, but you come out with a new product in the SaaS. Yeah, a new offering, a new yeah, service. A, a, a new part of it. Yeah, a new service. <laughs> and so, so why don't you tell us about the new service that's that's in Tivoli Live? Yeah, it was about a year ago we came out with our first one, and uh, we this is a continuation of that strategy. We're going to add more of our portfolio in a software as a service delivery. So we're announcing Tivoli Live Service Manager as our new uh, service offering. It complements our monitoring offering, and it consists essentially of our core service desk, service catalog, um, change management database, change management, con uh, configuration management processes, and release management processes. And not only that, but you also get asset management. And so it's a, a very large part of our automation stack, what we, what we like to call our process automation stack, that takes us all the way from problem, incident, change, and into IT asset management. And, uh, we're very excited about it because it's uh, it's an uh, ideal solution to deliver in a SaaS model. I'm always a bit beguiled by the name service manager because I expect it just to be like a help desk, but it sounds like there's actually a tremendously amount more. It's not just tickets that you're moving in and out of it. And this matches what we see from a lot of our customers is uh, we see a lot of mature processes around problem and incident management, but we also see a lot of um, challenges in, in moving beyond that and it's sort of affecting service management, ITIL processes, and getting that move beyond just simple problem and incident management. And mm -hmm. what helps a lot with is having um, a core data model so that all of the processes can share the data. Uh, a, a change management database is an important part of that data model so that when you do put problems in the system that those surface up as changes and you're dealing with the same assets, same configuration items throughout those processes. Then not only that, but when you also add in things like IT assets, when a laptop's broken, you know, and I have a serial number on that laptop, that's data you want available across all these different processes and, and the lifecycle management of those assets as well. So we find that these are all interrelated and it's best to have a solution that um, can take advantage of that data. Looking at what you're doing with Service Manager, like how, if someone's an existing sort of Tivoli user, like how is this going to fit into what they have already? I mean, it's not, it doesn't... You know, I, I can't imagine that it, obviously that this doesn't move all their stuff to the cloud or something. It's just moving part of the workflow or something. So, can you kind of speak to how, you know, how the usage scenario of using Service Manager would fit in with managing all your sure. ad additional IT and things like? What does it end up looking like? There's actually lots of different ways you can consume this capability because the Tivoli portfolio is pretty big, as you know. And so we generally you know, either tend to have tools that focus on automating tasks of a particular silo, like in database management tools and server management tools and things like that, or we have processes that span across those different silos to be able to affect change. And so typically if you're a Tivoli user, but you're only using some of the domain specific tools, this SaaS capability, as well as our product, doesn't really matter which way you consume it, provides that overlay, that uh, mm -hmm. ability to tie in all those different silos of expertise and have them flow in a, in a consistent you know, process, either when you're releasing or making changes to the environment. So it, it, that's one scenario in which it can fit. So folks that may uh, have looked at that, you know, implementing ITIL best practices or ITIL processes to cut across their domains, SAS may be less of an intimidating model by which to consume these capabilities. Right. Um, in-house because now you're gonna, you can focus on the process integration as opposed to getting the infrastructure all set up and talking. The second scenario is if, what, well, what if you already have a service desk? You know, service desks are a pretty mature part of the market, so by and large, most people have some kind of ticketing system. Well, the neat part about this is because it's based on the same software, um, for our existing Tivoli customers, if they want to, for example, take their service desk to the next level and add an asset management, it's a fairly seamless experience across the two. In fact, we hope that the experience we deliver to the end user, let's say the asset manager user that has to go and integrate their asset system with tickets, they may not even know or care 
that for different parts of the application, some of it's being hosted in-house, some of it's being hosted over at IBM. Oh, right, right. And so that's the kind of experience we want to be able to deliver. That way, customers that want to explore adding more capabilities can do so in a stepwise fashion without a lot of incremental investments to go along the way. They can just kind of scale it up. What are the tie-ins to on-premise things? Like you were getting into the the sort of configuration management, things like that. Like are, are, does it sort of scan your local network or how do, how do you get that view? How do you cross the firewall? Right, right, right. We've built a lot of simplified interfaces to enable very quick startup for a lot of our customers. So uh, what is new in the SaaS version uh, is we've created some interfaces to allow uploading of CSV or Excel files. So if you've got a set of users or you've got a set of uh, other information you want to upload quickly into the SaaS version, we have that capability. Obviously, over time, all of the uh, integrations that we have built into the product will make available through the SaaS model. The, uh, there's an option for a VPN. If you want to enable a VPN, sort of enable you know other types of traffic to talk back to our SaaS, uh, our SaaS deliverable. And you know, a, as just like other products, as time goes by, we'll be adding more and more capabilities and function along those lines to support that. Like you said, you have you know the, everyone has a service desk, and there's plenty of on-premise things, and, and Everyone has service management stuff as well, or many people do. And so, when you guys decided to go after providing, uh, you know, all of this service management stuff as a SaaS, like what, what caused you to want to do that? What's the motivation? Well, first and foremost, customers are asking for it. So we, we want to. We're hearing our customers say, "Hey, is there a way I can consume some of this capability without some of the upfront investments I need to make?" So certainly, that's my main motivation uh, for delivering this type of capability. And from you know just a pure looking at the market, um, you know it allows IBM to reach into other parts of the market, um, general business or mid market uh, that m may have always had a requirement for this uh, type of capability, but it's always been a, a bigger challenge for for these small organizations to be able to pick that up. So that's very exciting for us to be able to service this market using this model, and we don't have to dumb things down. We don't have to right. remove functionality to access it. We're actually leveraging. Our cloud, which uh, there's another motivation there, is this. This adds more content to our own cloud, as you know, we like to drink our own champagne, like to say <laughs> sure. right here. Um, we have this great platform that why wouldn't we take advantage of this platform to deliver these core capabilities? So obviously, part of it's our customers are asking for it. Part of it is us wanting to address new markets. Um, it's also great to do a trial, to try before you buy. Um, even if the customer is not necessarily looking at SaaS as a long-term solution, this is a great way, like I said earlier, hey, you know, I want to try this other new function. This is a quick way of getting it integrated, getting it in our hands of our users, telling, giving direct feedback to us, and so this kind of helps perpetuate a better uh, feedback cycle for us. Yeah, and, it, and that's, that's one of the interesting things I've seen in the, I guess the enterprise software area of, of SaaS is uh, it's a lot less onerous to just try something out. I mean, I mean, you know, usually in, in an on-premise environment, you know, uh, you've got to get some boxes and provision things and set up access. Whereas when things are offered as a SaaS, it's at least at the demo area, the demo stage, it's easy to just get a sense of what it would be like, which is which is uh, that's kind of refreshing. Oh, it is. <laughs> and you know, a lot of our enterprise customers want more than just a demo, right? They, sure. They, you know, like, like they want to do a proof and you know, show me and show me how it works. And this is a great way to you know deliver that proof. Well, great. Well, well, uh, well. Thanks for taking all the time to uh, tell us about the new offering. Oh. Is, is there a, is there like a website you can go to to check it out? Speaking of being able to uh, take it out for a spin, <laughs> like what what's the is there a URL? Yeah, or anything? yeah. So on the seventh, we'll have a, a URL out there. I believe it'll be tlsm.tivolilive.com. Okay. And uh, but if you just Google Tivoli Live, um, uh, we'll have a splash page with the user IDs and all that kind of fun stuff, and you go try it out yourself. Yeah. Well, that sounds great. Well, thanks again. Thanks.